Phantom Pencil. Welcome back to my channel. I am on number 27 of the Sleek Co problem set, which I did do a month ago and I didn't don't think I recorded a video for it or if I did, I can't find it anywhere. So number 47 is permutations two. Permutations one for me did not go very well. I was under 30% on all of it, but this solution I did was a lot better and I definitely want to apply a similar kind of thing the next time. I beat 91% of users in runtime and then 62% of users that use Python in memory. So let's jump in to this solution and I want to break this down um, as line by line as I can. So starting from here, um, basically we define this inner function again, backtrack, which is responsible for generating those permutations. And then we then said, um, if the start index is equal to the length of nums, it means the valid permutation has been formed um, so then it's added to that results list. And then below that, we have the results append, which just adds the current permutation to the results list and returns it. Then when we get down here to this used set, that basically just tracks um, used elements to avoid duplicates. Um, for then down here, we start this for loop um, that iterates through the elements of nums, um, starting from the current position of start. And then the, if the current element nums i, right, um, is already used in that set, it's a duplicate and the code continues to the next iteration and skips that duplicate. Um, and this is where we skip that duplicate here. Here we then mark the current value of the element as used. Um, and then here we swap elements. <laughs> um, and then we recursively generate permutations and then backtrack, um, which basically restores the array. Um, for the result, this initializes the list to store the permutations. This backtrack zero starts generating permutations from the beginning of the array. And then lastly, we return the list of unique permutations. So this result was definitely, the submission was definitely better than the previous one. And I want to apply that sort of same technique. While it is similar in certain areas with like the recursive calls, um, for, for the backtrack function, it does optimize memory better and speed and runtime, I guess. So definitely something that was learned here from the last one to this one. <laughs> but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to put this code in my GitHub repo, which is going to be in the video description down below. You guys are more than welcome to fork and clone, make it better, make it worse. Have some fun, learn something new, and I will see you guys again in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.